Hey everybody, that's Rob. That's Marcy. And it's been a hot minute since we've done a cup of sojo. It has. So let's go. Yo. First of all, let me say that um, it's very hot here in New York. It's very humid here in New York. It's very angry here in New York, wouldn't you say, Rob? People are angry out there, aren't they? They're angry. We have a, a guy that likes to yell out every morning for about two hours. Just yelling. He doesn't seem particularly angry, though. He just seems like he wants to yell. He sounds angry. He does, but when you see his face, he's not. He looks like uh, I've seen this guy, yeah. Wimpy from Pie Pie. Pie Pie. Pie Pie. Pie Pie. I would gladly buy him a hamburger today. Would you? I would, if he needed it. He never asks for one, No, though. he doesn't. He never does. No. So anyway, mm. I think the heat is a factor in people's mm. anger. Mm -hmm. So let's start with a little positive story oh, a little time. positive story time? What we're here to do today okay. is answer your questions mm. and comments. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read one here from Biebs72332. All right. All right. You guys are so cute. Aww. I want to know your love story. Love story? I'm going to let Rob tell it. Okay. I'm assuming that you mean how we met, because the love story has been going on for a long time now. But um, <laughs> points, <laughs> points on this hot, angry day. <laughs> we met in the green room of the Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Marcy was doing this amazing show called Once on This Island, and she was there with the entire cast. We were very young, by the way. And Rob was doing an amazing straight play, as they were called back then. I don't know if we'll keep calling them straight plays. Just non-musical. A non-musical called The Hot L Baltimore. The Hot L Baltimore. Uh -huh. The cast was extraordinarily protective of you, almost from the get-go. But I, I walked in, I went to the fridge, and I turned around and I saw Marcy. I'm like, whoa. And I saw him, I was talking to the cast, and I stopped talking. He actually didn't see me. <laughs> see him first. You walked in and you had that tweed coat on, a little oh, bandana around yeah. your head to hold right. your hair back. He had this mane of hair, blonde mane. I used to have hair. <laughs> and it was holding it, it back from his, from his face. <laughs> I thought, oh, he's so cool. He can't be an actor. Because at that point, I hadn't met any cool actors. Sorry, actors. Love you. Whoa. <laughs> we have so many friends who are going to be so angry with you. Lots of cool ones now. On this angry day. Please continue. I immediately went up, introduced myself, said hello to the entire cast, mm -hmm. and I could see that they were like, mm -mm, stand back, buddy. <laughs> and then we had to go to rehearsal. I looked for Marcy the rest of the time. Didn't and I see looked for her. him. We both just looked for each other. Yeah. Yeah. The next day I looked and looked and looked, didn't mm -hmm. see her. And then I had this thought. I'm like, I bet she's going to go to the show tonight. Because it was a Thursday when I first saw her. Friday, no good. Saturday, I'm like, I bet she goes to this show. It's just a hunch. There was a show in the black box, uh, Death and the Maiden. Death and the Maiden. And it's a cast. great show. It's so romantic. <laughs> and all of the cast that were working at the rep at the time were invited to go see the show. Yes. And... My hair was all pulled back in a bun when I got the alert that we were going to be invited to the show. And I thought, I don't feel like myself. Like My hair has to be loose for it to be me. And I thought, no, I'll, something tells me I should go. I'll go anyway. You well, remember the cast, yeah. we were all sitting in the back row of the theater and they saw Rob down in the front row. And at this point, this cast that was so very protective was like, that's him. That's the boy you've been looking for for the past three days. <laughs> I was like, I know, I, have to, I don't know what to do. And they were like, go walk by him. I said, I, I don't know if I can. And intermission hit. And <laughs> Agwe, the spirit of water, said, go get a drink of water. And I said, I'm not thirsty. He said, go get a drink of water. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and I went the other way, and they all turned me around to go back down the aisle towards Rob. So I literally walked down the aisle to you. you she walked down the aisle to me. I, obviously, I must have done something right for them to do that. Yeah. So Marcy walked by me. She hesitates. Mm -hmm. Just briefly. <laughs> and then she starts to move again. Quickly. And I was like, whoa, 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 excuse me. And I said, what are you doing after the show? She said, nothing. I said, <laughs> You want to go listen to some blues down in East St. Louis? Down in East St. Louis? <laughs> sure, wide-eyed, bushy-tailed. Slightly dicey for a first date. <laughs> but I was going there with my buddy who was in the show that night. I'm like, sorry, Paul. <laughs> I got to bring a date. And I ignored Paul and talked to Marcy while amazing 
blues was being played. One guy did come up to us in the bar, and Rob was standing with his legs mm. super spread out, like in second position. Because I wanted to make sure I was at eye level. I love him. Not towering me. over. Yeah. And uh, this guy comes up. He's like, you know he just wants to get in your pants, right? And I was like, mm. um... And he got mad. I was about ready. He still ready. gets mad uh, when he thinks about it. And I like, said, well. I'm like, you're a mother. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you too. You're going to ruin my first date. Well, but he I'm, didn't. You don't, you I, don't have to get I, mad. I, no, I know, but I, I did. Out. I breathed. You barely breathed. I was like, he's turning red. Y'all know how he turns red. I don't and, turn red. And I, I said, that's all right if he thinks that because it's not going to happen tonight and now he knows and it didn't happen and the guy's like huh? and he walked away he walked away and yeah. and she i mean she i mean it's happened it. since then so <laughs> <laughs> do you see like the sun that keeps going like behind a, the death star i wasn't paying attention i, mean, I was every, too busy just, reminiscing about our amazing days when we met oh well i'm living in the moment and it's amazing right now with the death star a little steamy in here. A little steamy. A little steamy in here. There you go. On the flip side. Yes. And getting back to the vibe going on, the, the hot vibe going on. Oh, in the, the hot world. vibe? Yeah, at okay. large today. Birchland Design uh, stumbled across our channel. Oh, okay. And Birchland Design had this to say mm -hmm. Dumb and Dumber. Which one of us do you think is dumber? I think it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Listen, not everybody is going to like you in life, and that's okay. Donna Brown does like us, though. Does she? she does. Donna watched our Joanne Hall video and said, I cannot stop laughing. I just took my husband out for a field trip to Joanne's today. He did good. Susan Neely said, Puppies, you guys are going to turn into puppies today and cute. <laughs> well... Uh, not to burst your bubble, but um, Nicholas Gantus said, Not sure how people watch these videos. Too much effort trying to be funny. Let's talk sewing. We have a couple of questions here. Tracy Vestal Harris asked, Have you always been able to take an improv approach to sewing, or did you first develop some sewing chops before finding the confidence to experiment? Well... Mm -hmm. This is a good question. It's a great question. I would say that I jumped in improving with sewing and then gained the confidence to actually learn what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I went the reverse route. Right Marcy there. has a gift where she just jumps into something and if it sucks, she doesn't care. It's she's like, just gonna she's like learning. It's amazing. Aww, I wish, no, I wish I had that gift. I, I criticize myself to death and it's Super fun. It's no fun criticizing yourself. No, don't don't criticize yourself, babe. I'd like to change, but you know. See? I'm criticizing myself right there. We're gonna Why work on change? that. We're gonna work on that. A lot of people ask this question okay. after seeing the machine on your desk yeah. here in the city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Jolie Simmons in particular wants to know what brand of sewing machine are you using? Well, this machine right her that's mm. behind Rob right now and is also covered in stickers to sort of hide the branding mm. is one of a couple machines I've got here in the city. I have maybe machines here in the city. <laughs> Several of them are under the bed. <laughs> I think we're going to do a separate video where we show people our machines because mm -hmm. all of the machines I use have pros and cons. So I don't want to just say one brand and have you mm -hmm. guys think that's the one I have to get because mm -hmm. there are so many different options mm -hmm. out there and they all do different things well and not so well. True. Mm-hmm. That. Sam Crochet and Fabric. Ooh. You okay there? I'm good. Keep all going. Right. I'm just getting fan of myself. Saw our latest video and said, I'm loving the dress and his shorts. Do you sew for hubby as well? Well, do I sew for hubby as well? Well, she shows. She said, well, well. Well, well, well she, she, she sewed the shorts and she sewed this shirt. And then nice. I mean, I don't want to like, you know, applaud myself. Rob loves Aloha shirts and um, I take advantage of the summer months to sew every insane fabric I can find. Yeah. Him. It's not just Aloha shirts. I love the other shirts you've done. Oh, I've done French uh, cup shirts. Which are beautiful. Just a little steamy it's to put that on today. It's a little too steamy for that today. And mm -hmm. I am still 
as I promised months ago, embarking on a Taylor blazer for you. Please. Oh, it's too hot right now. It's too Please. hot. Please. Too hot. You know right I need now. it. You need to start now because stuff's coming up. It's not all sewing all the time here. Sometimes we do things like introduce you to Rob's cup of cold brew that can also be hot. And we've got a few questions for you Ooh. about coffee, Ooh. all right? From uh -huh. your cold brew coffee tutorial. Deborah Hartman said, mm. thanks for the video, Rob. Mm. We need a video on how to cook biscotti to go with the coffee. Whoa. Yes, we do. Okay. I ferment, she bakes. That doesn't sound right. What? I ferment. I ferment. I make kimchi. I make pickles. That's, I make... That's what she said. <sighs> I ferment. There's two parters. Oh, okay. It's a two-parter question. Well. So you can... Segue into that. Don't worry, you can hold on that part. <laughs> okay. I've heard cold brew coffee is less acidic. Do you know if that's true? I'm going to be speaking out of my butt right now. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I think it is less acidic because I've read so much about it, but I don't remember off the top of my head. I know it tastes less acidic and it doesn't hurt my stomach. Rob tells me a lot about coffee and I find it all fascinating, but there's only so much space in my brain for information. Yeah. There's a lot of sewing information in there. Mm -hmm. and, but I do remember that coffee this way is less acidic mm -hmm. because you were waking up in the morning with like more acid -y feelings. It's true. And then this coffee happened. Absolutely. So his coffee, I would say, is less acidic. And I've had a lot of people who've tasted my coffee who have problems with that acid and they don't have that. So. Yes. Sweet. Mm. Here's another one from Max Robertson. Rob, mm -hmm. what's your opinion on the best way to store beans? Ooh. He likes this one. There are multiple things here. Um, the best way to store beans is to buy them fresh and to use them as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Leave them at room temperature. However, if you are not going to use your beans and you open a bag, put it in the freezer specifically you want to put it in a freezer that doesn't defrost now that's hard to do in most freezers well. so what I do is I have a little bitty cooler and I put the little freezer packs inside the cooler and like then the I icy packs yeah the icy up. packs yeah. freeze up mm -hmm. put the coffee where it's surrounded by the icy packs in the cooler put that in the freezer therefore when the defrost kicks on it doesn't get to the beans otherwise Put it in the deep freeze if you got one. Speaking of freezing, mm -hmm. a lot of people want to know, and Small Footprint has all their best because she's going to ask you right now, how do you get it really hot when you're ready for a cuppa? Because you make this brew cold, mm -hmm. right? You concentrate yeah. and you put it in the fridge. How do you heat it up when you're ready for a hot cup of joe? Well, it depends on how hot you want to go. I would not heat it up past 195 But how do you do it? Degrees. How oh. do you do it? How, okay. how do you do it? How do I do it? Yeah. I just put it on the stove in a pot, heat it up. He takes equal amounts of concentrate. Oh, wait. I thought uh, it was already done. Okay. I can do it. I can Here we go. Here we go. Here are your answer. And go. Okay. You take one part concentrate to one part water. You put that in a pot. Turn on your flame or your induction or your whatever it may be heat that bad boy up i would not go past 199 200 degrees you don't want to go past that because then you're going to start scalding the coffee and you can also just we have been known to nuke our coffee for mm -hmm. like 30 seconds oh yeah yeah in the microwave like if you just want yeah. a quick cup mm -hmm. yeah put it in the microwave equal parts yep nuke it boom this was another comment on the coffee video having very little to do with coffee. Mm. So you're off the hook for a minute. Okay. This one is from Paula D. Flag hyphen Circe. She says, I didn't think I watched y'all a lot, but the five-year-old saw Marcy on Manifest and pointed out that the man was not Rob. No, no, my young friend, the man was not Rob. And why wasn't it Rob? That was my first time playing an adulteress. I mean, not to spoiler alert, you find it out pretty quick. Spoiler alert. It's been out for a while. That episode's been out for like a year, two years now. Uh, about a year. Yeah, and it's not like I'm like, you know, the person on Manifest. You True. Know. But we were just play pretend, mm -hmm. make believe in, and that's what actors do. That's what we do. They, yeah, they play pretend. Mm -hmm. So don't worry. The man is Rob and will always be Rob. Speaking of role playing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bruce said, you two have such good chemistry. Mm. You should cheat on your partners and get together. Oh, hello. 
Good afternoon. I sure like your boa. Thank you. I think my name is Judea Camille. Mine's Baba. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Bubba. Thank you. Let's go get some corn dogs. <laughs> Indeed. A hot dog crusted in fried corn. Who wouldn't like that? The way you say it. Mm. <laughs> you know, Rob, we still get a lot of views and questions on our 3D face mask tutorial. Really? Can you believe that? Uh, it's Hey, good. You know, people are being smart. People, good. People still, people still being smart. People getting vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Melissa Green asked, I'm just wondering, where can I buy colored cotton buds, mm -hmm. especially ones with patterns on them? Any ideas on how to make them? I'm just getting prepared for the mandatory anal swabs. They are already mandatory in some places. Anal swabs save lives, and it makes sense to make it fun with colored cotton buds. That is not where I thought that was going at all. Yeah, I totally oh. bought that hook, line, and sinker when I first oh read that comment. Oh my god! <laughs> people, people. I was like, oh. oh, I was just imagining all these pretty little colored cotton buds, maybe with little scraps of wax print, or I thought, I don't know what she needs to do with these, but oh, I get it. I'm sh I'm shocked. People need hugs, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, but props for the dry sense of humor. <laughs> yes. Because that was so dry that you didn't, right? I, I'm just like, wow. You're red. It I, caught I, you. I, yeah. Yeah. I hope if you really did need those colored cotton buds, you found some. Mm. Um, and I hope you're not using them for what you said you were going to use them for. Because that's gross. Well, we've got some, we got some packing to do. Mm. We are taking our vaccinated butts. Mm out of this hot and angry New York. Smooth out. Smooth out, vaccinated and happy about it. Mm -hmm. We're doing a little work slash play weekend mm -hmm. to work on um. Ah, yes, uh, rude red. It's not a wall hanging, it's actually a, a, a sauce. It's a sauce. It's a sauce. It's our sauce. It's a delicious sauce. I'll make with my, my best bud, Christopher. You can even put it on corn dogs. You can, oh. He has. <laughs> yes, it's true. The whole Bubba thing wasn't actually playing. It came, every improv comes from a seed of truth. Absolutely. That's right, every great improv. Mm. But before we peace out. Mm -hmm. the emphasis on peace. We have uh, one last ask. Oh, we do. Lisa Hodges, mm. AKA Birdie, says, more dancing, please. Thank <laughs> you.